Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 10. And like I've told my son, I have no idea what it's going to be like growing up for you. I've tried to warn him. I've tried to, you know, tell him it's going to be different for you. And he's seeing that reality now. A local mom reached out to our whistleblower hotline after she says her son was bullied and called a derogatory name at a West Fargo Elementary School late last week. Now, she says, Aurora Elementary School officials are sweeping it under the rug, acting like nothing ever happened with no repercussions for the child that she says is a bully. Valley News Team's crime and safety reporter Bailey Hurley talked with the mom who says she feels like the school failed her and her son and doesn't want this to happen to any other families. You only hope that the people that you're sending your kid to are doing the best of their ability to care for your child when you can't. A situation after school last Thursday turned out to be the nightmare Rebecca Cheatley hoped she'd never have to live. And my son immediately was, Mom, guess what happened at school today? And I'm like, huh, what now? Her second grade son, Jax, telling her the derogatory name he was called by a classmate unprovoked, followed by an exchange of punches to the gut. Makes you feel so angry. <laughs> so angry. Jack says the incident happened right outside the front doors, adding there was a teacher close by who had to have heard and seen what went down. But when Cheatley went to school officials, they said they investigated but found that nothing happened. How can you let this happen to my child? And they had nothing to say. They had nothing to say. But he's been beat up on school grounds before and they didn't do anything about it because it was after school time. She says the school suggested Jacks walk out the back door from now on to avoid any other problems. We've tried different things. We've had him stay back. We've had the other child stay back. We've had uh, <laughs> teachers that are going to watch. Well, we see how that worked out. Only prompting Cheatley to keep Jax out of school this week, saying it's not safe for him to be there. It's unacceptable. I don't see any changes. I don't see anyone doing anything. She says the school also ignored her suggestion to have everyone involved meet with the school's counselor, leaving her feeling unsettled on what could happen next if nothing is done. I'm hoping that things like this don't, don't make him degrade his own self. In West Fargo, Bailey Hurley, Valley News Live. West Fargo schools couldn't tell us much as school is out for the week. And as was indicated in this story, school officials said that they investigated the situation and found no evidence to support Jack's story. Best part about today's weather was that travel conditions were good. With so many people Christmas shopping or heading home tomorrow, the forecast is certainly important. Let's find out about tonight's weather. Justin? And thank you, Mike, and good evening, everybody. We start off with a dense fog advisory in effect now through mid-morning. This is from Barnes County, points off to the west, and Griggs and Steele County, points off to the south. This does go through the entire overnight period. Some areas will get less than a quarter mile visibility, and there is a chance of some freezing fog with temperatures in these areas just below freezing. We're seeing zero visibility now uh, from Valley City out toward Jamestown, down toward Oak. Winter down toward the Aberdeen area, and uh, the fog reaches all the way back into the northern valley and out toward Langdon. So, if you're traveling in these areas, definitely be aware of that for this evening. Temperatures into the upper 20s and lower 30s, dry otherwise, with mostly cloudy skies. That will be the story. Temperatures uh, into the upper 20s and lower 30s during the overnight, with plenty of cloud cover, and the winds will start to die down during the overnight. Well, we got one more day of, uh, we'll say, mild air before uh, we turn a lot cooler for the weekend and next week. We'll have the details later in the newscast. All right, thanks, Justin. A day after a shooting in a Valley City home, a neighbor says that he was surprised such a violent act took place in his backyard. Last night around 8, one man was shot in the chest. Valley News Team's Joshua Pagaro went back to Valley City today for the latest information, and he joins us now in the studio with more. Joshua? Mike after, Mike, after speaking directly with Valley City's police chief last night, authorities weren't releasing any new new information on last night's shooting. We know that the man who was shot wound up at a Fargo hospital. The last word was that he was in stable condition. The chief told me that the shooting was between two friends. Several neighbors I talked to pointed out that the house where the shooting happened. Ross Powell says this area in Valley City is known to be safe. 
definitely family friendly. Um, we're trying to build our community and make it a place that people want to come to. So this is definitely out of the ordinary. I also asked, I also asked Paul whether there was a drug deal gone bad. That's something that others brought up yesterday. Paul wasn't sure, but said that he heard the same thing. Police aren't saying if that's what happened. They also haven't released any names or indicated that the alleged shooter has been found. Powell added that he didn't think there was any reason to panic since police say the victim was targeted. Since they know each other, it feels a lot safer in regards to it's not, you know, a random act of violence. So that gives a little bit of security. And there are so many more unanswered questions, including surveillance video that police told me they were going to check out. It was from another neighbor. I saw where those cameras were located, which is right next door. So that could help in the investigation. Mike? All right. Thanks, Joshua. While the police aren't saying, another resident told us that they were told police were looking for a car. It had Illinois license plates. You can call Valley City Police if you have any information on this case. The National Retail Federation is reporting the nation's largest retailers are expected to convert over 30% or more of the people hired for seasonal jobs to full-time jobs. So what do you do to be more desirable with regard to a full-time position? Well, the experts say make an effort to go above and beyond in the service that you provide. Managers want to hire workers that they can rely on and who treat customers well. Let your manager know that you're really looking for a full-time position and make sure your attitude reflects your desire to work with the company long-term. Become a team player and interact with the full-time employees of the company. They might advocate for you when hiring decisions are made. Being proactive will get you noticed. If someone calls in sick, don't hesitate to volunteer to cover the shift. And if you're looking for something to do, ask to lend a hand on any additional projects. 300 subsidized units in Fargo, uh, through the Housing Authority and through the vouchers, but again, there's almost that same number on the waiting list, so we're, we're kind of only meeting half the need. Thanksgiving is a day when we celebrate with good fortunes and friends, family, and food. For a growing number of our population, having enough to eat is a daily struggle. As Valley News Team's Veronica Marshall found out, the FM area's lack of affordable housing may be to blame. I don't know if they will get better. I think that we need to work on it. Affordable housing is a growing problem in the FM area, and it's causing more and more residents to go hungry. According to the latest hunger study for Cass and Clay counties, 41% of food insecure people say they have to choose between food and housing. And more than half say affordable housing is why they're struggling. They have rent that they can't afford, and they're making the really impossible decision between purchasing groceries and covering their bills. It creates a really uh, a cycle. It's almost impossible to get out of. Experts say the problem isn't tied to the people in need of help, but instead their inadequate incomes. The majority of the people we serve are actually working households. I believe um, in our latest study, around 70% of the households we serve have at least one member who is working full time. There are 11,000 households where people are paying more than 30% of their income uh, for rent. Gilmore says federal, state, and even local funding for affordable housing is drying up, leaving people to fend for themselves. Trying to meet this need when you have very limited resources, I think that's one of the reasons the number of people that are very low income they have struggle with housing and why that number is growing. It's over 2,000 people on the waiting list that are the, uh, at the Housing Authority for some sort of rental assistance. These are people that qualify for rental assistance, but they're not receiving it. The City of Fargo is looking into other ways of supporting citizens by creating a career academy to upgrade their skills and paychecks and by appealing to builders. We're updating some of our policies and, and really offering to do more in, with property tax exemptions to encourage low-income housing. Until then, advocates ask you keep an open mind and heart for your neighbors who are struggling because becoming food insecure may be closer than you think. Everyone has had changing circumstances in their life and I think everyone's been in a situation where they are not as well off as they were a year ago. What sticks out to me is really sort of empathizing, putting yourself in their shoes and realizing if I had one slip and fall, if I got in a fender bender, if I totaled my car, I could be here next week. It's that imminent and it's that prevalent. Veronica Marshall, Valley News Live. Gilmore adds that the proposal to create new tax exemptions so builders will create more affordable housing, that'll go in front of Fargo City Commission in two weeks. November 24th marks the 10th annual Small Business Saturday. 
That's a day to support local businesses that can create jobs, boost the economy, and preserve the FM area. And when you buy from a small business, you support the farmers, makers, growers, and artisans from which they source their goods. If you're looking to support small businesses in the FM area, you can find a list of stores and deals that might be offering up uh, by visiting downtownfargo.com and searching Small Business Saturday. Later on Valley News Live at 10, we check in with some early Black Friday shoppers to find out what prompted them to stand in line. And seasonably cool high temperatures today will turn into very cold temperatures to start next week. Details ahead.